uh, the wonders another of autotune. stellar performance from Rebecca Black. She's being very, very sarcastic <laughs> there. Because <laughs> autotune uh, is the magic word. Yeah. If you want to be a recording artist, you can't really sing. Even if you don't really look that good, uh, I think now you All get. you need is autotune and some money. <laughs> yeah, and some money and you know, a good video, maybe an uh, artistic director that's willing to take a risk on you. Mm. Then you can become an artist. <laughs> you too can be a superstar. How much is the budget? Huh? I think two million. Two million to cook. <laughs> to cook. <laughs> to cook. <laughs> Alright, you don't need that much to actually go through the education in the hospitality and tourism industry. And of course, it's quite lucrative. Mm. And uh, we've seen a uh, robust improvement in hospitality and tourism in Malaysia. In fact, it's changed over the, the years. And today we have Mr. Pradeep Nair, Deputy Vice Chancellor at Taylor's University, who's going to tell us about hospitality and tourism in the 21st century. Welcome to the show. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back, actually. Good You've morning, been here Terrence, before. Yes. Uh, Good morning, thank you Zara. for joining us this morning, sir. Now, how have things changed? Because, uh, um, well, the most apparent change, I guess, for any traveler uh, would be online. You can book your hotels, you can actually book your flights, you can do a lot of things online. So how has that affected the industry? Well, um, uh, the, the, I, I thought it's good to start by saying that the, the tourism and hospitality industry okay. is the world's largest industry. Wow. Uh, and, and it is the largest if, if you look at it from, from the range of organizations or companies that mm -hmm. provide services to a traveler. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a business traveler, a leisure traveler, or person traveling for any other reasons uh, for that matter. So from, from the airports to the transportation sector, to the ground handlers, to entertainment, to restaurants, shopping, uh, to the hotels and accommodation, the more obvious ones, the resorts. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all organizations that are grouped into the hospitality and tourism industry. Mm -hmm. Um, I must say that this is an industry that you know I, I would I would term it as a as a sunrise industry. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an industry that uh, is is only set to grow for a very very simple reason. We all yourself myself included we work a lot harder these days uh, than yeah. our forefathers. Now I'm not sure the forefathers would agree with us, <laughs> uh, but the reality is that because of the nature of our work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and because of cross border businesses and transactions etc. Um, this industry is one that would naturally be one uh, an industry that continues to be in demand mm -hmm. over the next you know 50 100 years uh, then again I think leisure and lifestyle you know eating out eating with friends uh, you know going out and having a little break after a, a, a strenuous week or a strenuous month uh, has become has come here to stay mm -hmm. the whole concept of disposable incomes uh, people setting aside money for a little holiday and then comes our story of Air Asia now mm. everyone can fly <laughs> uh, and then you have uh, reality shows you know the, the 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 whole range of chefs and and uh, chef wannabes and uh. and just ordinary guys who get on in front of a camera and, and is able to cook a pretty decent meal I think that's tantalized an entire generation of youth mm -hmm. uh, to start to begin to see hospitality and tourism as a very viable career mm -hmm. uh, but to, to answer your question directly uh, this is an industry that that has become so modern mm -hmm. uh, and and the whole management concepts of the way in which the hospitality and tourism businesses are managed to Day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's like any other business, mm -hmm. and this is one of the things I'd like to say this morning that uh, the hospitality and tourism uh, companies are first businesses, and and today there is a great confluence. Uh, there's a great. Uh, coming together of what used to be the art of service, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. art of hospitality with the science of management. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in terms of education, hospitality and tourism is very much a management of the business of food or business of accommodation or business of any form of service to the traveller. Mm -hmm. And the internet has practically revolutionised the way in which business is done in this industry. Right. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I mean, you don't really see many TV ads for hotels anymore. You see it more on online. Mm. Yes. Travel here, go there, fly coupons, this. Coupons. Uh, yeah, coupons and, and a lot of other stuff, they're all online. Um, has this changed the way educators approach the subject? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely it has. Um, the, the, uh, I, I, I guess first and foremost, uh, let's talk about mobility, right? Uh, the, the whole, the whole 
growth of hospitality and tourism across the Asia Pacific particularly and this is the growth area mm. for the next you know 20 30 40 years um, the growth of, of the hospitality business uh, traditionally has always been in Europe and the United States mm. now this is the Asia Pacific century as we call it and given the growth here uh, the way educators, uh, for example, at Taylor's University, uh, one of our key focus is international mobility uh, and, and the, the capability and the ability of our students to not just learn about this business in a local context, uh, but in an international context. Because the reality of hospitality and tourism, Terence, is the fact that if you do a degree in hospitality mm -hmm. um, your workplace is not just Malaysia and, and at Taylor's for example more than half of our students eventually end up working abroad mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you work for the Shangri-La in KL in, in a matter of you know months or even a year you could end up at Shangri-La Beijing you could be at the Westin you know in, in, in Bangkok or you could be and, and it's, it's a very uh, um, mobile uh, employment market in, in hospitality and tourism and this is what attracts a lot of young people mm -hmm. uh, into this industry because there's a great opportunity so for us as educators uh, we we try to encourage each of our students to at least spend one internship abroad uh, outside of our country uh, so we have many of our students training in China mm -hmm. we just had a big hospitality group from China come and uh, take on about 40 of our students as interns uh, in China we've got students training in the Middle East we've got students training in Europe uh, in, in, in the United States so the, the whole international outlook is mm. so important uh, mm -hmm. to education in this business okay. um, I, I guess the, the second uh, uh, important way in which educators have reacted is trying to, to bring uh, the industry into the university mm -hmm. in a far more meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come to Taylor's University, we've got uh, 14 kitchens, uh, we've got nine restaurants, we've got a hotel of our own within the campus, and, and the students actually get to experience real life uh, hospitality or travel uh, activities within their day-to-day -day classes mm -hmm. from Monday till Friday and uh, we've recently launched the uh, student training and employment program uh, the first partner that's come on board with us is the Shangri-La group mm. uh, and they have committed to take a batch of students from the first year first semester of their degree and and work with them sponsor them right till the end of their degree studies and eventually, uh, if, if both parties are happy, they enter middle management positions into the industry. Wow. Next month, we sign with Hilton Worldwide. Wow. Uh, a whole range of Hilton properties would, would come on board and start taking some of our students from the first year. Mm -hmm. so, so the days when uh, students look for a job after they graduate, I think those days are numbered mm -hmm. because I think industry now wants to try and come and get them early enough mm -hmm. uh, into this into their into their organizations okay so these days it's not just uh, practical studying and theoretical studying you're doing that for the students as well so are there new courses because the, the uh, possibilities in hospitality and tourism has changed tremendously do you have any new courses and what about in terms of placing your students as global graduates what are you doing okay. to accommodate them in that area? Um, there the are two parts to that question. Mm. Um, in terms of new courses, uh, I'd like to explain it in terms of breadth and depth. Mm. Uh, let's start with depth first. Um, there was a time when the highest qualification you can get in hospitality was a certificate or a diploma. Right. Uh, and it was considered as, as, a, as a course where you end up you know, as a waiter or a cook. Uh, well, I have news. Those days are way over right. uh, now. I mean, uh, today we at, at Taylor's University, we've got diplomas, bachelor degrees, master's degrees. Mm. Uh, we've got a PhD in hospitality and tourism. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the depth of programs, the whole range, uh, this, this, in this, this particular field has actually grown to become as respectable a career 
uh, as respectable a field of study as any other. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of breadth, mm. um, what used to be just hotel management or tourism management uh, has now uh, spawned off. Uh, you've got recreation management, events management, which is extremely popular. Something uh, that we're looking at right yeah, now. Really. We've, we've, uh, we've got culinary arts, we've got um, uh, specialized programs in pastry, etc., etc. But uh, what excites me the most uh, is our newest uh, um, program, mm -hmm. which finally brings together art and science. Mm. Uh, last month, we launched our Bachelor of Culinology. Culinology. Whoa. <laughs> so, in, in, in very simple terms, it's a combination of culinary arts and technology. Okay. Ah. And, and uh, uh, for easy understanding, it is a combination of trying to provide, uh, make someone become a chef, a food technologist, and a food scientist. Uh, all at the same time. So, culinology started in the United States uh, by the Research Chefs Association of the United States mm -hmm. and it is a program where the student first trains to become a chef right. mm -hmm. and then eventually manipulates food using science to produce an end product. So, your, your frozen roti chanais, your, you know, your, 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 your convenience foods that you get off the supermarket mm. uh, are typically ones that are produced by culinologists in All the right, United right. States. Oh. Very interesting stuff. Um, unfortunately, we've run out of time, mm. um, but you know, I just want to say for all those reality chef show contestant wannabes out there, I know they'd appreciate it if culinologists come up with the science of the souffle. <laughs> that always fails them. <laughs> okay. they thank, will. thank you very much thank for joining you, us. Sir. Thank, thank you. It's been so a much. fantastic time talking to you. And uh, it is indeed a sunrise industry. I mean, you already planned your holiday, I know. No? Okay. How do you know? Ah, see, I know. Because ah. it's the in thing now. Everybody plans the holiday for December now. And uh, they haven't taken steps towards it yet. Just don't go to a Rebecca Black concert. <laughs> Radiohead. Radiohead. <laughs> Alright. Okay. All right.